Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. Tonight is episode 200, which I cannot believe. I have been doing this steadily every Wednesday night for four years now, so I'm excited to meet this milestone. If you hear some background noise, it is absolutely raining cats and dogs here in Atlanta. I'm coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. And as you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. And we will get started momentarily. I realized I forgot to put my brand here in the corner. So I am the Paper Pixie. You can visit me at thepaperpixie.com. If you're new to my weekly live stream, tonight we're going to be doing projects from start to finish. I've got a great, I'm calling it a prism gift box and a card using the Bloom Where You're Planted product suite. It is one of my favorite suites in the new annual catalog. A couple of exciting things. Today is the last day of the month of June, which means today is the last day to order from the outgoing mini catalog. That's the January through June 2021 mini catalog. Today is the last day to order from that. And when tomorrow arrives, that catalog will no longer be able to be ordered from. So make sure if you didn't get any items from that catalog that you get those orders in tonight. You can order with me at thepaperpixie.com slash shop. And let's see, I do, if you are planning to order today, my host code for the month of June is HRSTCPKE. Orders of $50 or more will earn this month's free gift, which is either tear and tape, the pretty flowers embossing folder, or the simply elegant trim, or the elegant, I think that's what it's called, the simply elegant trim. Um, those are the choices for the month of June. I will have new choices tomorrow. So anyone who places an order of $50 or more with me before shipping and taxes gets to choose a free gift. I've got a great Pixie Perks program as well where you can earn a $50 shopping spree with me. I love to spoil my customers. So let's see. Um, I, of course, I need to update my graphic, but if you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like current copies of our, if you'd like copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. That graphic will soon change. Um, we will have a month of the annual catalog alone and then coming August 3rd, the new mini catalog will be launching. That's the fun catalog that has products for the upcoming holidays. So I get to pre-order from that catalog as of 5 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow morning. I will be sitting down tonight after the live broadcast to put together my pre-order list. And you know that I will be doing a sneak peek of those products. Um, I am not sure when I will do that, but I will be sure to let you know. So. I think that is all that I have. The only thing that I will say about pre-order, it is an amazing perk for demonstrators. So starting tomorrow, if you purchase the starter kit, you can add pre-order items to your starter kit. So that's a really cool perk. So think about that. If you've been thinking about joining the Stampin' Up! family, you can take part in the pre-order as well, just like all the active demonstrators. So. I think that's it. Let me show you a quick sneak peek. I've got a really quick and easy card tonight. This is from the Bloom Where You're Planted product suite. And then I have done a box like this before. I think I called it a triangular treat box. And I want to say originally the idea came from former demonstrator Amanda Charlesworth. I absolutely love her. I tweaked this to be more of an equilateral triangle on the sides. And if PJ is watching, she loves my magnetic closures. We're gonna do that tonight as well. Pretty good sized, and I'll show you again when I flip the camera, but a pretty good sized box there. I don't have any specific treats to fit in it, but a handful of goodies would fit in there. I'm sure you guys will come up with some great ideas. The difference with this version of the box, yes, Deidre, thanks for reminding me. Um, the difference with this box is I added designer series paper to the side, and I'll show you the quick tips on how to do that. Deidre reminded me tomorrow the, design, the designer series paper sales starts that I believe will be from July 1st through August 2nd. And uh, I think it's August 2nd. It might be June, July 31st, but I will be sure to clarify on next week's live stream. 
Um, it is select papers from the annual catalog that are 10% off. So I know one price in my mind, that the papers that are normally $11.50 are $9.89, I think is the price. So it's a great time to stock up on designer series papers. I'm too excited about the pre-order and totally forgot about the DSP sale. So you'll see some information on the, my blog about that. I have not started Prize Patrol, but I'm going to go ahead and let me get that started. Oh, that's okay. It'll it'll still capture it. Um, pardon me, because I was running right up to the last minute, which I always do, isn't it? Let me. Um, I'm going to get Prize Patrol teed up. We will do Prize Patrol at the end, and in honor of my 200th episode, I'm going to pick four winners tonight. So we'll have some fun going through that at the end. I just want to get this teed up so that we can. Get going, yes, see it already has 20, already 20 entries. All right, let's go ahead and flip the camera. I think what we're gonna do is the box first, then we'll do the coordinating card. The card is quick and easy. I'm gonna show you some different ways to use the products in the bloom where you're planted sweet. Love this sweet so, 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 so much. So let me flip the camera here, put on picture in picture. All right, so on page 80 and 81 is the bloom where you're planted sweet in the sweet collection which currently i believe is actually not orderable the sweet collection itself the only thing that is currently not orderable is the paper lattice and that is the um the, the paper lattice that you see here on this card sample um, but you in the sweet collection you get the plentiful plants bundle which is the stamp set and the dies I've got a bunch of the dies out right now because we're going to use those tonight, but this is the Plentiful Plant stamp set. It is a photopolymer, and I haven't actually stuck mine to the case yet, but our new photopolymer cases have the images on the insert itself, so it's a really great, great, great way to store these. I love the stamp set because the sentiments are fantastic, and you can have, some, you can have a lot of fun building the plants. The dies are great. Not only do they cut out images from the stamp set, but also images from the designer series paper. Stampin' Up! is so smart to do that. So on our Prism gift box, we're going to cut out the designer series paper. And on the card, we're going to cut out stamped images. So I want to show you just two ways to do that. But look how cool this stamp is. It's a distinctive stamp, I believe. Yes, distinctive. You can't see that because my face is in the way, but it's, it's identified here as distinctive. You get that awesome shading without doing anything but inking up the stamp and stamping it down. So I love this suite. I'm sure many of you may already have it because it's such a great suite. And this is a quick and easy card. So we'll do that towards the end. Let's jump into the project. Again, page 80, you can find this product suite. I've got two things of show and tell from my kiddos. The first one, Nolan wanted to show you his Lego Ankylosaurus. I've mentioned before, he's my five-year-old son. He loves dinosaurs, and he's got a Lego kit. He picked up the wrong backpack from school today, so he doesn't have his drawings from school. So this is what he chose for show and tell. And then Lily wanted to do something special for my 200th episode, and it cracks me up because it has nothing to do. <laughs> I was thinking maybe she might do something with the number 200. And this is a very involved um, shelf unit. None of these are glued down, but these are apparently all of my and my husband's beauty products. <laughs> so we have smaller beauty products on the top shelf. We've got shampoo and soap and perfume on the bottom shelf. And I don't know what those are. She told me and now I don't remember, but I thought that was pretty cute. And then she decided to throw in the number 200 and it's upside down. The kids really, no. Thank you though. <laughs> my, my dad is here visiting and um, he, <laughs> he uh, we haven't seen him since Thanksgiving of 2019. So he will probably make an appearance to say hello to you all. Those of you that have been watching my lives for a while, he's affectionately known as Papa Pixie in here. So he'll pop in to say hi. Um, I'm hearing the kids. <laughs> the kids wanted to say hi but I'm not ready for them to be on camera yet so all right we're gonna start with a piece of just jade and this piece measures eight and a quarter by 11 so those of you that use a4 paper um, they're really loud um, a4 paper you, you'll be able to make this box as well so eight and a quarter by 11 
This project will post to my blog on Friday's blog post with a shortened video tutorial, picture of the template, and you know the goodies, all the measurement supplies, etc. The pre-order begins, Evelina, at 3 o'clock a.m. Mountain Time for those of us in the U.S. So tomorrow morning at 3 a.m. All right, so on the eight and a quarter inch side, I'm gonna score this at two and five eighths from each side. So I'm just gonna rotate it 180 and do two and five eighths again. Turning it to the 11 inch side, and we're gonna score this at three, six, and nine. Now while we're here, I'm gonna make two tick marks at four and a half inches. So four and a half and tick mark, I'm just taking the ball tip of my stylus and pressing that down at four and a half. Then I'm gonna flip my cardstock. Oh, the thunder, y'all. <laughs> and then four and a half again. So I just made a little tick mark. Essentially what that is doing is marking the center point of this section, the second section from the left. That's gonna help us with our diagonal score lines. So let me repeat that one more time. Two and five eighths and two and five eighths. So from each side on the eight and a quarter inch side, then on the 11 inch side, three, six, and nine, and then tick marks at four and a half, flip your cardstock four and a half again, okay? Always like to give you less measurements if possible. All right, so let me bring in the template, which I hid underneath my catalog. Here is the template. So where you see these little triangle marks, I know this is taking up the whole screen here because it does take a full length sheet of cardstock. Where the tick marks are is where we're gonna do these diagonal score lines. I'm just gonna show you here on the template. I'm gonna line up where we made that little four and a half inch tick mark and we'll score on the diagonal down to this corner of this section. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll bring the template back in a second. I like to start with putting my stylus ball tip right on the cardstock, then bring in my ruler. And I love this ruler. It is linked on my favorites page at thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. It's a cute little metal ruler, but quick and easy for doing these diagonal score lines. So just work your way to the other side and same thing from the tick mark on the diagonal. Now I'm scoring on the same side of the cardstock that I scored using the Simply Scored. I have a kitty cat hair as usual on my project, but there's that diagonal score line. I'm gonna then fold and burnish on all the straight score lines, so don't worry about the diagonal ones just yet. I'm gonna attempt to hide the magnets during tonight's broadcast, because I know a lot of you like to do that. All right, so we've folded and burnished on all the score lines. Let me bring in the template again, and we're gonna be removing quite a bit, but again, these are big pieces of cardstock, so hold on to them for punch outs, or you can trim them down for layers on a project. So I've got my, I think this is a two inch wide strip. I'm gonna have that at the top. I've got this in portrait mode. And I'm gonna come in and remove these two lower corners. Totally up to you, but for this project, I'm just gonna cut right up the middle of the score line, but you could cut just inside the score line if you like. We'll do that. I think my dad is up to something. <laughs> I'm sensing it. Okay, so remove the corner. Like so. So we remove those two corners and now we're gonna remove the two top sections from the top and I just like to turn the cardstock We'll come in a vertical score line and cut up to that second horizontal score line. I can't wait to watch the replay to hear how loud the raindrops are. So my craft room has skylights, so we always know when it's raining, don't we? <laughs> I forgot to mention my husband Brian is sitting right over to my left, your right, and he is watching for your questions tonight and he'll pop those up on the screen for me. He's a huge help. 
And we do get a lot of questions, so if you don't see your question pop up on the screen, never fear. I do read through the comments. All right, so. Yep, I hear my dad making noise. All right. So you can save these pieces again. They're great for scraps to punch out things, etc. We don't need those pieces. Then I think, oh, the other thing we need to do is round the corners, but I'm going to wait to do that till we bring in the designer series paper because we'll do that all at once. But with the score lines, we're going to fold and burnish on those diagonal score lines. Again, I'm folding away from the score line, turning that valley score line into a mountain fold. like so. So essentially what we're going to do, I'm going to dry fit this so you can kind of see how this goes together. We're going to adhere this front part to those diagonal or triangular pieces and the back pieces we're not adhering but this will be how the box closes like so. And then that's also the way that you can open the box and fill it with treats or something handmade, right? All right, so let me put the template away. The next thing we're going to do is adhere the designer series paper. Actually, no, let's do the, <laughs> I was trying to think of a creative way to hide the magnets. I'm thinking while we, while we talk. All right, so I'm going to dry fit this, I think. And <laughs> this is the part that I was like, when I made the sample, I did not hide the magnets, but I wanted to show you how we could hide it behind the designer series paper. So let me think that through. It's always easier to adhere the designer series paper first before you close the box, but you want to do something like this. All right, so I'm gonna eyeball this. Here's what we're gonna do. This could be a big bust. <laughs> All right, so we wanna come down, that's two. We wanna come down one and, about one and five eighths with the magnet. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's see how this goes. I, need, I keep watching for questions to pop up. <laughs> All right, so on my favorites page, I have linked to my absolute favorite magnet source, which is Total Element. And if you use my coupon code PAPERPIXIE, so um, if, actually you can go to the paperpixie.com slash total element. And if you use coupon code PAPERPIXIE, you'll get 10% off of your magnets. And I love these magnets. These are one thirty second by one quarter and you get 200 of them for i think it's 14.99 it's a great great price so i'm going to stick this to a glue dot this way we don't have to worry about our magnets disappearing on us I'm sticking that to a glue dot and of course i picked the wrong magnets hold on i have a few vendors i want to do my total element ones <laughs> The total element ones are perfect for a glue dot. And I got three instead of two. Okay. I keep them in this little clear case so they don't get stuck to anything else. So I'm going to pick up a glue dot here. And we're going to line up one and five eighths approximately. This should work. And I'm just going to, we're totally eyeballing this. Nobody's going to see it because we're going to hide it with paper. And it's going to stick to my metal ruler. Awesome. <laughs> you guys, this is what happens when I try to do something different. Here we go. Let's do that. We're going to do a pencil mark. Here's my pencil. One and five eighths. I got a question. The template for the box, Lynn, will post to my blog on Friday's blog post at thepaperpixie.com. All right, just doing a little pencil mark there. And we'll stick the magnet. I'm eyeballing it to be about, there's that. All right, so we've got two pieces from the, now what's the name of the paper? I should know the plentiful plants. That's the bundle. 
Bloom Where You're Planted Designer Series Paper. Two pieces that measure two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So we're gonna start with those. I'm gonna hear the first one here. We're gonna put that over the magnet. I have all of, I did have a question last week. Now I can't remember who asked. She wondered if I actually create at the space behind me so I'm not constantly turning. And yes, I do create at the space behind me. But for my live stream, I face this way. So yeah, I'm not normally as, I don't know, what is it, unorganized? <laughs> when I'm creating or I don't have to I don't get in as many steps as I made during my live how's that so I'm gonna put glue sort of all on the back side of that paper we want to make sure we get that around the uh, magnet we're gonna hide that magnet behind our DSP now remember we've got um, glue dots a glue dot behind that magnet so it shouldn't shift on us all right so the next thing we're going to do here is, this is the trick. So I'm folding this like a um, sandwich board, sort of. Is that a good way to describe that? And I am actually going to pick up a magnet here with a glue dot. Closing this, because we want to basically line up this magnet. Oh, this is what I forgot to do. <laughs> my dad has me totally frazzled right now y'all okay we want to drop it first because we got to figure out what the positive and the negative are so that is the side that is going to stick to the magnet does that make sense so we don't want to put the glue dot on that side oh thank you i do need to round the corners <laughs> Wow, I guess on the 200th episode, right? Um, good question. Let me do that before I forget. We've got another piece here. So this piece is one and, I'm looking at my notes, one and three quarters by two and three quarters. We're going to round the two corners of this and round the two corners of that. Thank you. You guys, what would I do without my hive mind watching? My detailed trio punch, one of my favorite tools. So we're gonna round these corners. And then we wanna make sure, this is directional in nature, so the leaves are going up. We're gonna round these two bottom corners. So just keep that in mind, depending on what paper you use. If it is directional, you're gonna want it to be in landscape and you wanna round the bottom two corners. All right, so let's get back to this. I'm gonna close that here drop my magnet right there so I know which is going to line up the right way. We want to make sure that the glue dot goes on the back side. So just be strategic when you pick that up and stick your glue dot on the right side of the magnet. Just going to pick that up with my finger here and drop that right there. It should line up right where you want it to go. Okay. So now we can glue this paper down. And you want to be strategic again with the glue here. If you want to hide that designer or hide the magnet, I'm going to put the glue a little bit close to the edge because our magnet is fairly close to the edge. Now, if you're not worried about the magnets being under the DSP, you can just use glue dots and it's much, much easier. This would be why I do not um, adhere <laughs> the magnets behind the DSP, but it does, it is nice to hide it. So just want to make sure that I come in here and make sure that that is glued down around the magnet because we're real close to the edge there. And we should see that those are going to line up just where we want them. Now we've got one more panel of designer series paper to glue down. And this is two and three quarters, whoops, not that piece, this one, two and three quarters by two and three quarters. You want to make sure that if it's directional, just dry fit your box and make sure that you're putting that in the right direction. So we want it to go just like that. So these are sort of opposite directions. The magnet does not raise the DSP too much because it's only about 1 32nd of an inch. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that on the camera but it really does not raise it up much. Plus we're gonna kinda hide it behind the embellishment. So. 
So these two pieces are basically in opposite directions. This one's upside down, this one's right side up. I love this pattern of designer series paper. So here's the trick. We are gonna adhere the front, okay? So the front where we have that magnet, we're gonna adhere to these triangular pieces and leave the back open. Now we could also do it the same way where we adhere this part, completely up to you, but I like the way it looks gluing it to the front. So I'm just gonna put liquid glue I'm gonna wish that I did that sentiment first, but we're going with it. And we're just lining up that cut edge with this score line. Reiterate, ride the doll patrol just once. You don't have to do it multiple times. Yeah, with prize patrol, you only have to, you're only gonna get one entry. So and as many times as you put it in, only one entry. So multiple entries will still only get you one. <laughs> Those of you that are new to my live stream, I do do prize patrol at the end. So that's why you're seeing a lot of people saying hashtag prize patrol. But don't worry, I will give you the instructions at the end so you don't miss out. What's the DSP? The designer series paper is bloom where you're planted. As I'm off screen here, sorry about that. All right, so the box opens from the back here. We've got these kind of funky triangular tabs here. Um, yes, so Lillian, we already did do the designer series paper first. I think that's what you're asking. So that is how the box goes together. We've hidden our magnets. I think before you glue, like do you do the paper? And then yeah, you wanna do the designer series paper first before you glue the sides of the box together. But I love that noise. Hopefully, here, let's do it by the microphone. Love it. I love magnets. Um, but again, if you have small children, I recommend a Velcro dot. If you, that would be my recommendation instead of a magnet. Because these magnets are really strong. All right, so I'm gonna do, I've got a piece of basic white. We're gonna do a little bit of stamping for this and then some die cutting to finish off this box. So I've got a piece of basic white, three quarters, by one and, oh, I know why Lillian's asking. The corner, the side pieces. <laughs> That's what I forgot. Is that what you were thinking? I didn't do the triangle pieces. <laughs> wow. See, here's the thing. I know my dad's up to something, and so my brain is like, what's he going to do? Okay, so we've got two pieces here. These measure two and three eighths by two and three quarters, both of these. They're in landscape, if you had a directional pattern. I'm gonna flip these over and with my pencil, I'm gonna make a tick mark, just a little pencil mark at one and three eighths. We're gonna turn these into little triangles to put DSP on the side. Thank you, Lillian, for keeping me in check, but of course I didn't, was not paying attention. So basically what we're going to do is from that pencil mark, cut on the diagonal from pencil mark down to the lower corner on both sides. Paper trimmer is great for this. You line up the corner and the pencil mark and cut. And this will give you an equilateral triangle that's going to fit perfectly on the side of your box, which would be so much easier to adhere if you did it before you glued the sides together. <laughs> Oh, stay tuned for my YouTube tutorial where I do it correctly, right? All right. There we go. These pieces are going to fit right here on the side. Now, it shouldn't be too bad because the, the box is fairly sturdy. So let's do adhesive. Now 
And that should be a pretty perfect fit there. I love that peak of designer series paper on the side and you can kind of press from the other side if you want to do that. Again, way easier to do it if you did it before you put the box together. So let me repeat the measurements on the side pieces, two and three eighths by two and three quarters. If you have a directional pattern, cut that in landscape. Then make little pencil marks at the top at one and three eighths, and then cut on the diagonal from the pencil mark to the lower corner. And then you will have perfect triangle pieces for the side of your prism gift box. Okay. So let's get back to the sentiment. Did I forget anything? No, normally it says go Montreal. Oh, yes. Oh, go Montreal. <laughs> she did not. She said go Bolts, I bet. Oh, Norlene, Brian's messing with you. That's right, go Bolts. <laughs> Congratulations on all your wins so far. Norlene, we tried to watch the Bolts game the other night, my dad and I, and I only got, we don't have cable anymore, so I only got a 10 minute preview of it <laughs> before they wanted me to pay. All right, so back to the basic white, three quarters by two and three quarters. And we're gonna stamp the thank you sentiment in evening evergreen. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna stamp that right in the center here, hopefully. There we go. And then I'm going to adhere that to our box. Again, this would probably be easier if you did it before you glued. Do as I say, don't as I do, don't as don't do as I do. Is that the right phrase? Do as I say, not as I do. And I'm going to adhere this down towards the bottom, sort of centered between the bottom of the designer series paper and the bottom of that flap. And now let me show you something really cool with the designer series paper. You could cut the inner tabs out, Stacy. Part of why I leave those in, however, is it gives you a really nice, um, clean look on the side. Sometimes when you cut edges out like that, you start to have a little bit of a gap there. So I tend to leave the tabs in because it just gives you a much nicer look along that edge. Hopefully that makes sense. But they do look a little bit funky. <laughs> But by design, because we're making a prism box, that's why. So there's our sentiment, thank you. And then we're going to have some fun with the designer series paper. So I've strategically cut, on this piece I cut a strip. This is one of the patterns. All of these can be cut out with one of the dies in the bundle. And then I um, sort of fussy cut uh, gingerly around these two pieces. So we're going to cut out both of these with the dies in the bundle. And then we're going to cut out this other pot that is not partial, like so. So we're going to do those three things. Let me bring in the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I'm going to need to replace my plates here, but we're going to go with it. Put that one down on the bottom because I'm using a whole strip here. Actually, let's, let's make this a little easier. I'm gonna come in and cut so I can put everything on the cut at once. I'm gonna save the ones. The ones along the bottom obviously are partial pots. And all right, we should be able to do all of these. Just gonna grab some mini post-it notes or if you have post-it tape. Just gonna grab these to sort of hold. I probably could have cut pieces out of these or cut these into multiple pieces, but post-it notes are cheap, right? So line up that and kind of hold it in place. This one, oh, it should be just right. And the scraps fit on the side for the rectangles. Let the scraps fit on the side. For the triangles? Yeah. Um, the ones that I cut off? You mean? Is that what you're asking? That's the question. Oh, I'm not sure what the question is then. The scraps on that I removed from the triangles unfortunately would not be the right size for the sides of the box, if that's the question. Okay. 
There we go. Cut these three out. I cannot wait to play more with this sweet. I love this sweet. I'm going to be using these dies again for the card. But the versatility of this bundle I love. You can stamp the images or you can stamp and die cut or you can just die cut from the paper. All right, so there's those three. I'm grabbing my silicone mat here and we're gonna piece together this beautiful plant. So a little bit of liquid glue. I can never, once I have my nails painted now, I can't use my nails, right? Some of you can relate. So a little glue on the bottom stem there and I'm just gonna kind of overlap those. And then a little bit of glue on the bottom there that I'll put the pot on, the terracotta pot. Oh, so cute. A little bit of extra glue oozing out there. Silicone mat's great, keeps glue off your workspace. Just gonna grab a couple, maybe three dimensionals here. I don't wanna go all the way to the bottom of that pot. Kind of put this little pot off on the angle here. Ah, oh, so cute. Right there. So it's just sticking to the lid there. Then I'm going to grab a large gilded gem because this was just screaming gold to me. Put that right there. <clears throat> so, in a roundabout way, we created our Bloom where you're planted, <clears throat> excuse me, Bloom where you're planted prism gift box. We've got designer series paper all around. It's a good generous size. Uh, some dimensions I'll share with you. It is three inches wide at the bottom. It's three by three by three, but the height wise here, I think is two and five eighths. So two and five eighths, obviously it tapers but it's a really cool gift box. So let's jump into creating the quick and easy card that goes with this. I think I have all my pieces cut and ready to go, maybe. All right, so here's the card we're gonna make again for those of you that joined a little bit late. I'm gonna do this one just slightly different. So we're gonna make this quick because we are at 841 at the moment. This is gray granite. I cut it to four and a quarter by 11, scored it in half at five and a half. Okay, scored, folded, and burnished. Let me burnish that one more time. I've got a piece of basic white that measures four inches by five and a quarter. We're gonna go ahead and adhere that to the inside of our card. For those of you that like to dress up the inside, Go ahead and stamp on that before you glue it down. Like so. So that is the inside of the card. Now I've got a piece of Just Jade. This measures three and three quarters by five. And a piece of the awesome Bloom Where You're Planted Designer Series paper. This is the back side of the paper we used on the Prism gift box. This piece measures three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. I'm gonna adhere that to the Just Jade piece. This card will be slightly different because I sometimes can't decide between the colors of my card layers. I know many of you, that happens to you as well. So we'll see which one we like better. This will give us about a 16th of an inch of the Just Jade peeking out from behind that beautiful brick pattern. And we'll adhere this to the card base. These are my favorite dimensions for card fronts. Because then you really do get to see the card base color, a little bit of a pop of a contrasting color for that tiny sixteenth of an inch border there. All right, now I've got a piece of 
basic white, and this measures one and a quarter by three and five eighths. And we're gonna stamp the sentiment a little note with the biggest thanks. I love this sentiment for a card. And I'm gonna stamp that off to the left. There we go. We'll adhere this to the card front and then we're gonna stamp our next plant. It's gonna be the same plant as what's on the prism box, but this time I'm gonna show you what it looks like stamped. All right, so there's that. Oh, my husband caught a pile of things from falling, thank you. All right, so we've got a scrap piece of basic white. We've got beautiful cinnamon cider that I'm going to stamp the terracotta pot with. And wait till you see the shading that you get just with one stamp. How cool is that? That's a distinctive stamp for you there. One of our greenery pieces I'll stamp in soft succulent, one of our new in colors. And then Evening Evergreen, the larger spray of plant here. There we go. Will you make a waterfall card? Ooh, I've got a request for a waterfall card. I will add that to my list, yes. Did you say what you could put inside the box? I did not say what we could put inside the box. Probably a handful of Hershey's Kisses, Hershey's Nuggets. Um, I, these are like my go-to candies, right? But it's again, it's pretty good size. You could probably fit, um, oh gosh. It's a bigger mini, box than you normally do. Right? Yeah, it's a bigger box than I normally do, but the, the, the fact that it tapers makes it a little bit of a challenge to put stuff in there. Mini candy bars would fit. Um, I was thinking maybe like a, a really pretty like silk scarf or something. If you folded it up tight enough, that might fit in there. Good question. I'm out of, okay, so I've been eating my stash of chocolates. So I'm kind of out of chocolates. <laughs> I mean, you know. Okay, bringing this back in. Let's do die cutting again. We're gonna use the same pieces. I just wanna show you the difference. I love options, especially with the um, this bundle. You get options with both, or I should say the suite, with the paper and the stamp set. So bringing in the big shot, oh, the stamp and cut and emboss machine because I can't get big shot out of my vocabulary. And we'll go ahead and line all these babies up. I'm gonna reuse those post-it notes. Oh, you lost your. What color do you use? Leaves in. The leaves are in soft succulent for the smaller bunch and the larger bunch is evening evergreen. And then this guy. I hear my post-it notes letting go. We're just gonna go with it. Okay. That cracking noise is normal. I know I think it unnerves Brian a little bit. Get these beauties out, clean up my mess. All right, and then silicone mat. We're gonna do the same thing this time with the stamped images, okay? So a little bit of glue on the stem here. Oh, I love those layered together. A little glue down here. Hey, John, 
Can you bring me my uh, plug in? Oh, you need your power. Yeah, it's uh. Here, take mine. I'm good. I got juice. Here you go, dear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> my husband's laptop's low on juice. Is it reaching? All right, so. Dimensionals again. Let's do another trio here. Yep, my dad's up to something. I know it. And then we're going to put this off to the right. Oh, I love that popped up. And of course, to tie this in, let's grab. You're up to something, Dad. Wandering like an old guy. <laughs> and then we'll put a little glue dot or gilded gem here off to the side. And let me bring in those projects to clean up this mess real quick. All right. Oh, so I need you to vote. Gray granite or just jade? Just jade, gray granite. I. Brian votes for gray granite. I'm going with the Just Jade. What do you guys think? What, what do you see? <laughs> yeah. But see, it's look how different the card looks just by changing the card base. I mean, it doesn't look incredibly different, but... Oh, he, Brian's, <laughs> Brian's saying more of you are saying gray granite. I love it. Well, one of these cards, or maybe both, will post to my blog tomorrow at thepaperpixie.com. Here is our coordinating prism box featuring the bloom where you're planted product suite if you've joined us late check out pages 80 and 81 of the annual catalog great samples here i love this one let's we'll bring that closer with that macrame embossing folder in the back mm, awesome 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 i think they fussy cut those plants from the designer series paper so that's the project for tonight how about a little bit of a prize patrol we're doing double prize patrol tonight. So four lucky winners in honor of my 200th episode. Here's the scoop with prize patrol. Let's switch back to me. We're going to go to prize patrol. So in the comments, leave hashtag prize patrol. Both my YouTube audience and my Facebook audience can participate. Make sure you spell it correctly and you add the hashtag to be entered to win. I'm going to start to share my screen so we can see those entries coming in and I'll give you some time to do so. Let's see, share the tab. Let's do this guy. Hopefully it's, oh, it's not sharing yet. I need to add to the stream. Here we go. Let's add it. Add to stream. Hashtag prize patrol. Look at those entries climbing up. What number are we at, Brian? 215, 219. Oh, you can't see. It's right there, right in the middle. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of small for you. All right, so prize patrol tonight. Let me flip the camera because I didn't tell you what stamp sets. I've got two. I'm showing this off to the tiny, tiny part. Um, let me see if I can switch this real quick. Will that work? No. <laughs> okay. Daisy Lane. I have two stamp sets for Daisy Lane, one of my favorite stamp sets. And I know this is super tiny, but lovely you. Let's do this. I'm going to remove that for a second and show you the stamp set. So lovely you and Daisy Lane. Okay. We're going to start with Daisy Lane. Let me switch back to Prize Patrol so you can see that. I'm going to, hold on, <laughs> this prize patrol is new. This is what the third or fourth week that we've done this. All right. So number or winner number one for the Daisy Lane stamp set as it spins. Thea Turnley. Congratulations, Thea. I'm going to write your name down here. Congratulations. You've won the Daisy Lane stamp set. And Thea, when you are ready to claim, you'll claim your prize patrol at thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol. So congratulations, Thea. Winner number two of the Daisy Lane stamp set. Oh, 
My dad's watching. <laughs> do, do, do. Debbie Cox, congratulations, Debbie. All right, that's winner number two for Daisy Lane. All right, we're drawing again for lovely you. This is fun. I feel like I'm spinning the big wheel on like Wheel of Fortune. Yay, Terry Wigmore. She's on my team. Lovely you. Congratulations, Terry. And our final, fourth and final winner for tonight for our episode 200. Yay, Lois Feldpausch Highland. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Lois, congratulations. All right, let me write this down. That's a long name. I love it. <laughs> Congratulations, Lois. That's awesome. All right, let me get that. I know my dad would like to come and say hi. So hi, let, what? <laughs> let me go ahead and stop sharing this. Remove. Um, I think I can remove the claim prize patrol. If any of the winners have questions again, let me recap. We have Lois Feldpausch Highland, Terry Wigmore, Debbie Cox, and Thea Turnley. Congratulations tonight. And Papa Pixie, would you like to come say hi? Oh, <laughs> Some champagne to commemorate oh, the Oh, uh, look evening. at that. It's like this is Papa Pixie. Pepper grinder, Brian. Oh, oh, hi. I am so happy to be with all you paper pixie people tonight. <laughs> And even happier to be out of my home in Florida. So That's right. I'm enjoying my time here. Thank you so much. And many of you know that uh, 200 episodes of this live video is a big deal. So <laughs> this is a big deal. So thank you all. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure if this oh. works. Oh, oh, oh. Yay. oh boy. <laughs> Congratulations. So they're kid. all going to clean up this mess, these boys of mine. Oh yeah, my gosh. Well, thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, have thank you. Oh. <laughs> oh, too I told you he had something up his sleeve. One other little thing for you. Oh, some bubbles. Awesome. We got some bubbles in my Stampin' Up. Champagne flutes. Look at that. Yeah, all right. Good. Well, while you do that, <laughs> thank you all so much for joining me and for being on this journey with me to episode 200. I can't wait to be celebrating episode 400 with you and many, many more. I really appreciate showing up in your homes every Wednesday evening and sharing my love of paper crafting with you. Thank you all for your support. Um, your encouragement, your ideas, your questions. It has truly been an honor and I love being with you here every Wednesday night. So I can't wait for more. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna do a quick cheers, I think, here. This was totally unplanned. Well, I didn't plan it, let's say that. All right, Dad. Papa Pixie, thank you, cheers. And there's a <laughs> confetti hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> Cheers to all of you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful and blessed week. Again, today is the last day to order from the mini catalog. Tomorrow is the designer series paper sale. And what else am I forgetting? Oh, the pre-order starts tomorrow. So if you can't wait for the pre-order, great time to purchase the starter kit. Reach out with any questions. Tomorrow I will post tonight's card. Friday, I will post the video tutorial and all the goodies and measurements and templates and all that good stuff on Friday for the prism box we made tonight. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful and blessed week, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Take care. Bye.